hot. Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm Lon here from Analysis. On today's episode, I'm going to talk about the reason to use glow light. Many of us are quite struggled to know when to use a glow light. So of course, everyone can be able to use a natural sunlight. Especially Malaysians, we have plenty of land in Malaysia and also in property. We live in landed house. A lot of us can be able to leverage the natural sunlight from the window or you can actually grow your plants outdoor. But comes to this era, a lot of people are trying to move to smaller apartments. So we will start to move our plants indoor. So here's the thing, when you move the plant indoor, right, the conceptions of light is really different compared to human eyes. So how to know that how many lights a plant needs to actually grow well. So today, this topic, I'm going to delve into this subject and to let you guys know the step-to-step -step guide to choose the grow light and also to understand the intensity of light and when to use them and how to use them and also what kind of plants need how many voltage of lights. The first one will be why do we need a grow light? Of course, uh, when you move to a house, right, if you live in an apartment, you only have one balcony, of course you can grow your plants in a balcony. But a lot of people tend to cater their plants in their library or in their working stations. The locations will not have uh, windows over there. So when we get further from the window, the light is getting lesser. So it's really important to understand that plants have a different conceptions of light. So when you have a library without any window nearby, that means you need to use a grow light. So it's necessary for us to understand that plants need lights to grow well, not water. Light is a primary source of energy for them to process photosynthesis. So through the photosynthesis, they can actually get their own energy and also their food for them to grow well. So it's really important for plants to have a light. So this is one thing. Actually, there's another easy way to determine whether there's sufficient light for your plants in a room. Uh, we can determine by sky visibility. So the more sky that you can actually see, it means that the light is actually good enough for a certain plant species. So the lesser sky that you see from a window means that the, the light is actually not sufficient enough. So of course, that's the reason why we always move our potted plants close to the window as much as possible because more sky visibility over there so the plant can receive plenty of sunlight for them to process photosynthesis. So yeah, that's the easy way. Another thing is that we usually get questions from our customer and also my followers, they will always say, it's actually fine for me to put my plants in toilets. So um, unless the toilets have plenty of window and there's actually a glass roof, it's fine for you to grow your plants inside the toilet. If there's no window, you know, it's actually a no-no. Some people will say that, hey, the plant's doing fine in the toilets. Yeah, I will answer that. It's doing fine for the first few months. So if you start to water the plants, you know, and also growing them for a couple of months later, you will see the plants started to welter and they will kind of go into the dormancy period. They are going to hibernation. And sometimes during the dormancy or hibernation, the plants might die. So don't try to put the plants in the toilet. If you don't have any window in the room, that's the reason why we need a glow light. So once we understand the reason why we need a glow light in our house, so the second thing I'm going to talk about is the color of the glow lights. Of course, when you go to some nursery, you will see some pink color lights, you know, some blue or some of them is purple. And also a lot of people don't understand that what kind of light that we need to grow for a certain plant species. Usually the grow lights that we have in the market come in a white color, we call it warm white. It consists of full spectrum, means that it consists of uh, three colors in red, green, and blue. So we call it the RGB lights. So the RGB combined together, you can see the lights actually comes in white. But of course, there's a lot of colorations is based on the requirements of the certain plant species. The red color light usually used for seedling plants or some plants that needs to be able for them to bloom or certain plants that has a red colorations that need higher intensity of red colorations to induce the color in the plants so that it can actually show the prominent reds in foliage. So another thing is that RGB comes off is usually plants need only blue lights for them to produce um, chlorophyll. I think if you guys really don't understand what kind of plants colorations that you need to grow for your plants, you can actually always opt for the full spectrum grow lights. So comes the third one will be how to choose the grow lights. Um, before I delve into these subjects, I think it's really important for us to understand your places. You have to understand where do you live and also where do you want to grow your plants. Of course, um, if you have a high ceiling living room, you can't just use a tube light. And also it's not strong enough to let the plants to receive the light from the tube light. You will need some spotlights here. If you are growing them in the shelf, right, of course this one will not uh, a good choice for you guys to use it. 
usually people use these kind of tail lights to install underneath the shelf so that the plants will actually get near to the grow light and also to process photosynthesis. It's really important to understand what kind of plants you are growing and also the place they are living in so that you can be able to determine when to use the grow lights. So this is a few choices that are available in the market, of course in our web store also. So comes to number four, once you understand the situation in your living room, like I say, if you have a high ceiling or you have a place like this, the plants go on the wall and you need a grow lights from the top to shine on them, you can actually use this kind of grow lights here. This is all the grow lights that is available for sale in our web stores and uh, it's actually Apollo grow light and each consists of different kind of wattage and also colors. So it's really important for us to understand the wattage. The higher wattage that you have for the lights, right, it means the higher intensity the plants will actually receive the sunlight from the grow light itself. So always try to choose a higher wattage if you have a really high ceilings or the source of the light is really farther away from the plants. If you have a plant that's really near it and also it's just underneath the shelf, you can still use some tube lights. We have a 9 watts up to 24 watts. Once you understand the voltage of the grow light that you have, that you bought from the market or from us, then you can understand that each voltage will produce different intensity of light. So how to measure the intensity? If you have a light meters here, so we will determine by the lux or foot candle. So if you're using foot candle, you can switch to lux. So one foot candle is around 10.8 lux. So if you have 10 foot candle, you will probably have around um, 108 lux. So if you have uh, 100 foot candle, it means that you have 1008 lux. So once you understand the intensity of light and also the spec that we have here, let me show you around what kind of lights that I'm using for certain plants that I have in the studio. Like I say, I'm using shelf, uh, I mean the Apollo tube lights for my shelf plants and also my IKEA cabinets. So I'm using 24 watts and I realized that some of the plants get close to the lights over there are actually kind of burned off and the leaves getting a bit bleached and it's a bit yellowish but the plant is growing fine and really vigorously, that's why it's growing really fast. So uh, in my experience, I will actually change to another lower watt, so we'll probably use about 18 watts, it's sufficient enough for IKEA cabinets for my anteriums over there. And it also comes to platysium, I'm using 35 watts, right? And I realized that 35 watts is good enough for a certain plant that has a distance around one and a half feet away from the glow light source of light. Once it's reached further than that, some of my platysium are not really doing well and they're kind of like going to a period of dormancy. They are not pushing out new leaves and also they are prone to more pest infestations and I have to check on them regularly, make sure that they are actually fine. So there's a lot of maintenance I have to do when the plant's getting further away from the source of light. So um, another one that I'm using for my plants that is actually getting efficient enough of light like the SS foam in my wall. I'm using 65 watts. The plants are actually growing fine, but SS foam is a plant that grow quite vigorously if you have sufficient enough of light and it can actually withstand full sun condition. If you look into how Mr. Fong grow SS foam, it grow under full sun and the plants are actually growing really, really rigorously and it's pushing a lot of uh, fertile fronts. That's why uh, 65 watt is okay to grow the plants for my SS Fong. Enough with the technical talk here, let's get some actions. I will show you around with plants in my studio to see how many lux is good enough for plants. So over here, I have anthuriums grow above my IKEA cabinet and I'm using one grow light. I actually get from IKEA, but the bulb is actually our Apple bulb grow light. It's 35 watts and I try to measure the intensity of the lux here. Okay, if we move close to the source of light, it's close to 100,000 lux. 100,000 lux, it's considered full sun. If you get close to that, I think it might scorch the leaf of the anterior. If we move further away, it's about 1.5 feet. We are receiving around 15,000 lux over here. So I guess 15,000 is considered quite indirect bright light. That's why the anteriors over here are doing quite fine. So over here, I try to move it away from the source of light. I think it's about two feet, two and a half feet. So I'm receiving about 6,000 lux over here for my anterior VGI. I think for sitting plants like this anterior VGI, you know, 6,000 is sufficient enough for them to push out new leaf. And I have these plants over here for months already. I think it's doing really fine. Yeah. Here we are using another Apollo bulb light so for my platysterium. The platysterium needs kind of uh, bright uh, light for them to thrive. 
Over here, they are get close to the uh, Apollo bulb lights. That's why the plants on the top here are growing really fine. And also because of the Apollo uh, bulb grow lights, right? Their angle are more narrower. So one grow lights is only good enough for one plant to grow. So they can't be able to reach further than that. If I measure here, it's around 9,500. It's good enough. It's considered quite bright lights, you know, for a certain plantation to thrive. So, but the problem is some of the plants on the lower level are not receiving good enough of, uh, source of light from the top shelf here. You can see over here it's around 5,000. For engineering it's fine. But of course for platinum it's considered quite low light. For the plants at the bottom here, of course we use some extensions. This is our extension socket. So we will actually extend the distance in between the source of light for these plants or in the bottom of the shelf to let the plant to receive enough light from here so that it actually can increase the intensity so that it can receive high amount of lux over here. Woo, hot! So we add on the extensions and you can see the plants at the bottom of the shelf are receiving around 9,000. If I move further a little bit, it's around 8,000. Compared to just some 5,000, I think 3,000 increment is actually quite a good intensity of lights. So the plants are actually good enough to grow over here right now. Um, why don't we talk about the Apollo grow lights? I will talk about IKEA cabinets. I usually we use uh, Apollo tube lights for shelving purposes. You can see here, uh, we we'll try to measure the lux intensity. If I move close to the 24 watts uh, Apollo tube lights, you can see it's around 20,000. It's considered really bright light. That's why my entrums here, you know, are doing really fine. But the downside is, you know, the intensity of the light will gonna scorch the leaf a little bit. That's why you can see it's bleaches and it get a bit yellowish. But in the middle here, move away further from the source for lights is around one feet. We have around 5,000 lux. It's considered okay. If I move down to the bottom of the shelf here, it's around 3,000. So for 24 watts of uh, tube lights here, is considered enough for IKEA cabinets. So this is the maximum distance you can actually reach. The travel distance around two feet. You know, it's good enough for plants to grow here, especially for antiums. You know, it doesn't require a lot of light here. So uh, another shelving that I'm using here is actually for my propagations. I grow propagated plants inside here in the the box, especially begonias and labicia or adicias because they prefer in high humidity. So I input some shelf light here. This is Apollo tube lights. Like I said, it's around 18 or 24 watts. So for this one, right, there's actually a downside because we are using mostly full spectrum warm white. It doesn't have red intensity color here. The colorations of red is not enough. That's why all these carnivorous plants is growing, basically they are growing, but they are not in their full potential, which means that it will not turn to pinkish color. You can see the pink cola here are actually in green, green in color, which when I bought them, it actually really pinkish. I mean, not slight pinkish, it's very pinkish color. But I don't see any pink color here right now. That's the downside of using warm white. If you have a choice, you know, to grow carnivore plants or plants that has more red colorations in their foliage, you can use high intensity of red colors so that it can actually bring out the vibrance of the plant supposed to be. This is my propagation box for my begonias. And some homalomina, SP silver. And some labicia and jewel orchids. To summarize it, you know, how to determine the light is sufficient enough for you to grow the plant. So first of all, you have to understand the plants, whether the plant needs bright light or not. So based on the plants that you get, you can understand how many lux is enough for you to grow the plants. Of course, uh, if you have 500 to 2000 lux parameters, it's actually considered low light. You can grow anthuriums, monstera in some uh, aroid plants. Of course, if you have provide them high intensity such as um, 3,000 to 8,000 lux and um, they will be happy and also they will thrive under that conditions and also 3,000 to 10,000 consider actually quite uh, medium light if you have above 10,000 to 20,000 is actually considered really bright light you know, bright indirect more than 20,000 or 30,000 that one is considered full sun conditions and if you get close to the source of light, it properly might scorch your leaf and also burn the leaves also. So be careful of how many lux intensity you're getting from the source of light and also try to move further away if the intensity of light is too intense for the plants to grow. So that's all for today guys. You know, that's all the technical things that I talked about on how to use a grow light suitable for you to grow your plants indoor. 
If you want to check out more, you can actually look out more for the product descriptions in the link below. And also, if you want to see anything new in the future, drop a comment in the comment box below. And don't forget to subscribe my YouTube channel. Bye-bye.